Chris. The DNA report from that aborted burglar has come through. Right. Bit of a surprise. The sample of blood we took from the floor matches the DNA profile of your scouser rapist. Looks like Heather Carney had a closer escape than she thought. Heather thinks the intruder was a burglar, doesn't she? As far as I know, yeah. She give a description. Uh, about five foot eight, slim build. Too dark to see much more than that. We've got a description of our rapist as being over six foot from the two victims. Well, I don't know. It was the lab came up with the profile. Have you got anyone in the frame for the burglar? Yeah, Colin Price. So we're looking for a description that fits. I'm not looking for any description in particular. Well, Colin Price is about five foot eight and slim. Well, she volunteered the description. I didn't suggest it. We'd better have a word with the DCI. He said he wanted to be kept informed. Five foot eight and over six foot. Bit of a discrepancy, isn't it? Well, it was dark, Gov. She could have thought he was smaller. It's also possible that the two rape victims exaggerated the height of their attacker. Now, do we know what this nurse's movements were that evening? There's no reason to ask us, sir. At the time, it just seemed like a straightforward burglary. Any property taken? No, but two minutes after we received the call, Colin Price, a known burglar, was found trying to start his car two streets away. He had a cut lip. Now, Heather Carney says that she swung a chair at the intruder full in the face. He also had a bag containing gloves and a torch and a screwdriver on the back seat. Did Price say anything when he questioned him? No, nothing. Now, I don't doubt he was working that night, Alistair, but I think he's jumping the gun a bit, assuming it was at that particular house. As it was so dark, I don't suppose there's any point in showing her the photo fit, is there? She couldn't describe his face, Gov, so I don't think so. But it would be useful to know what her movements were. Any ideas? All I know is she got back about two in the morning. Didn't mention where she'd been. Both the rape victims were followed home from clubs late at night. Right, well, we don't want to let on there was a rapist in the flat. There's no point in scaring the girl unnecessarily, but obviously we need to talk to her. So I suggest you two go down and have a chat with her. But be discreet. Don't ask her any questions that'll make her wonder what we're doing. She's been traumatised enough as it is. So this Claire's a bit of a victim, is she? Oh, I don't know. You think you've got through to them. They finally accept the beatings aren't going to stop. They press charges, the bloke gets put away, and what happens? They go out and choose a carbon copy. And this new bloke she's with sounds like a right user. So what are we going to do about it, then? Well, nothing. She's had her chance. Now, apparently she's got a job serving behind the bar at the Pike's Head. With all the amount of stolen gear changing hands in there, I think she might be useful. Well, we haven't identified the intruder yet, but we know he was involved in other serious crimes. Oh, sorry about the mess. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, so that was from the blood sample, was it? That's right. So he wasn't the bloke you thought, but he has done other burglaries? The thing is, Heather, it would be useful for us to establish how this person operates. His timing. How he decides when to make a break-in, that sort of thing. Now, if I remember rightly, you came back fairly late that night, about two o'clock. That's right. Um, I'd been clubbing it with a mate of mine. Uh, I'd been in here for about a minute before I realised someone else was in the flat. Is the club far from here? Red's in Broom Road. So the, what we have to do is we have to try and consider all the possibilities. For instance, one of the ways that a burglar can operate is to wait outside the house until he or she sees you leave, and then they know the house is empty and they'll break in. Do you think he might have known me? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just a possibility. It could just as easily have been a stranger. Now, when you were at the club, did anyone watch you closely, or did anyone pay you particular attention? <laughs> it was six weeks ago. The person you went with? Um, Melanie. Um, I basically go to keep her company. That's Melanie... Cross. Um, sorry, why do you need to know her name? Well, it's just so that we get the full picture. I see. She's just popped out. You must be Jeff. That's right. Who are you? WPC Ackland. I'm from Sunhill. I've heard about you. It's June, isn't it? Look, do you mind if I come in and wait for her? Be my guest. Uh, one other thing, Heather. The description you gave me when I spoke to you last. I gave you a description? Yeah, you, you remember what you said. Um, remind me. About how tall you thought he was, his build. Um, it was very dark. You don't remember? Sorry. Did he have an accent at all? I don't think he said anything. 
Oh, well, never mind. The crime prevention officer been around? Uh, yeah, he has. Well, I just noticed you've still got the one lock on. Oh, that's right. He's given me all the details. I've got everything I need to know. Yeah, well, don't put it off for too long. No, Clem's going to do it this weekend. That's your boyfriend, is it? Fiance. He's got some leave. Well, he stays here when he's on leave, does he? And we own the flat together. That's right. Clem Ashcroft. Ash Ashcroft. Right, well, thanks again for your help. Sorry to bother you. Clem Ashcroft, we checked him out. He was in Northern Ireland at the time of the break-in. He could have cut himself shining the last time he was here. Two spots of blood we found were fresh, Gov. He'd been out of the country for weeks. We'll check that. Well, I can't see she'd have any reason to lie. I think we should check it out, sir. What do you do for a living, Jeff? Well, there's not much work about at the moment. You know how it is. Come on, kid. Hi, Claire. Don't turn it silly on. You play a game in a minute. Oh. Might not be an exact likeness. We think he had a Liverpool accent. When was this? About six weeks ago. Do you have any idea how many people pass through here? Well, it rings a vague bell, but I can't say for definite. He probably came in on his own and then paid particular attention to one of your customers, Heather Carney. Heather Carney? Yeah, she's about five foot six, early twenties, attractive brunette, blue eyes. What's this bloke done? It's a serious offence. What's something to do with Heather, is it? I thought you didn't know her. Well, I might do. There are one or two Heathers come down here. Oh, well, if you remember anything, give us a ring. Yeah? What's it about? Thanks very much for your help. Come on, kids. Let's leave Claire and Auntie June to have their little chat. He's all right. Really? Yeah. Listen, I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. Look, uh, can I have a word with you outside? I hear you got a job serving behind the bar at the Pike's Head. When you've got a record, you're not exactly spoilt for choice about what jobs you take. Claire, but the Pike's Head... I'm not involved in any stolen gear. I'm just serving the drinks, that's all. How long are you planning to be there? I need the money, June. I'll be there as long as they'll have me. Right. Well, as you're working there, have you heard anything about any cheap videos? <laughs> Barry was the only one offered me a job. You expect me to grass him up? Give information about his customers? How much is it worth? I thought you were with the kids. Surprise, surprise. This has got nothing to do with you. What do you mean it's got nothing to do with me? He's paying you a pittance. You don't know that Barry Zip. On the other end, you do owe June here. I mean, where would you be if she hadn't helped you out that time? Look, I'd really like to speak to Claire on my own, please. We're a couple. We share everything. Don't we, love? Jeff, please, just leave it. I'm sorry about this, Claire. I didn't know your boyfriend was eavesdropping. How much is this sort of information worth? Makes no difference. It's just out of interest. We've got nothing to lose. Go on, then. But I'm not getting involved. I'm no grass. Well, if we were to be given any information, you'd be paid on results. Well, that's not good enough. I want a figure. It would depend on the information. You ask your governor how much, and then we'll talk again. Well, he'll say exactly the same. Talk to him. My client here is due to see Detective Sergeant Gregg. The name's Colin Price. Hello, Colin. Take a seat, please. If I told the manager of the club that I was looking for a rapist, Heather could easily have got to hear about it. She can't find out that way. I can't investigate properly unless I ask a direct question. I've got to be able to ask Heather, did anyone chat her up, offer a lift home, that sort of thing. Otherwise, I'm just wasting my time and making everybody suspicious. She's going to have to be told. Sorry, I had a word with someone at Clem Ashcross Regiment. They seem to think he would have been in Northern Ireland. Is that official? Well, no, it's not official as such. Well, get it officially confirmed. Meadows. Right, well, I'll have to do it later. I've got Colin Price downstairs with his brief. Well, have you got enough to get in for going equipped? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think so. Clem Ashcroft. Y you tell him I'll be down. Well, he's here. He wants to know why we've been asking questions about Heather at the nightclub. Turns out he's best mates with the manager. Known the manager of Reds for years. It gave me a call. What's going on? Please, take a seat, Mr Ashcroft. You don't make photo fits for burglars, I know that much. Uh, that's not true, actually. So it's just a burglary you're investigating? We think there's more to the breaking at your fiancé's flat than we initially thought. Go on. We believe the intruder in the flat was a rapist. The blood sample we took from the floor of Heather's flat matches that of a man who was raped twice before. Rape? We believe that he followed Heather back from the club and then broke in. Now, we haven't told her, 
Because we didn't want to scare her unnecessarily. Well, you've caught him? Not yet. <laughs> what, are you still out there? At the moment, yes. Mr Ashcroft? She's not staying there another second. She's going to her mum and dad's. Are you going to tell her? Now, it's highly unlikely that the intruder will go back there. Rapists aren't renowned for their bravery. They tend to go for soft targets. Now, telling her might be the best course of action. But let's talk about it, shall we? How long have you known about this? We had the results of the DNA profile back today. That's genetic fingerprinting? That's right. So you know for certain it was this rapist in the flat? We're satisfied that the blood found on Heather's carpet matches that of the person who raped the two women. Mr Ashcroft, although we don't want to frighten Heather unnecessarily, the thing is that she might have seen this man in the club. He might have come up to a pestered her in some way. And although we have a description of the man already, she might be able to give us something new, something additional. And obviously we couldn't ask Heather that sort of question, because she's going to want to know why we're so interested. Now, how do you think she'd react to finding out that the man in her flat that night was a rapist? She seems to have coped very well so far. Tell her. She can handle it. Well, bearing in mind that incidents like these can affect people very badly. No. She's a cool head on her. <laughs> That's why I'm marrying her. She can handle it. When you were arrested, we found a bag on the back seat of your car containing gloves, a torch, screwdrivers and various other tools. Can you explain what they were for? The blood test that you took from my client for DNA profiling, I would take it that the results were negative? Correct. What were the tools for, Colin? I've been helping out my brother-in-law doing some building work. You didn't mention this when I spoke to you six weeks ago. Where does your brother-in-law live? Doral Road. I see. So what were you doing in Harlow Street? Well, I was driving back from his place and my car broke down. I was trying to get it started again. Do you often do building work in the middle of the night? No. I stayed on for some food and a beer, watched a video with them and then I drove home. Colin, you've been doing houses since you were 16. You know that the tools we found in the back of your car are exactly the tools that a professional burglar would use. For the tape, Colin Price is smiling. They can be used for building work as well. You were out working that night, weren't you? He's trying to do me for going equipped. Do you deny that the tools are those a professional burglar would use? The blood sample's no good, so he's trying to do me for going equipped. I don't believe it. I was trying to help my sister and her husband. I was doing them a good turn. And this is what you're going to tell the magistrates, is it? Mr. Gregg, he's told you what the tools were for. And I don't believe a word of it. Oh, this is undue pressure. I have a good mind to make a complaint. Heather? Heather? Hello, love. Uh, we need to have a chat about the breaking. What's happened? There's something they need to explain. I thought there was something funny going on when we talked earlier. What is it? Would you like to sit down? It's that serious, is it? What is it? The blood sample that our forensic people took from the floor of your hall was checked in two different ways. Firstly, we checked it against the person we suspected of doing the burglary. And secondly, we checked it against the DNA profiles of all our outstanding cases that we had on computer. Now, against the suspect, the result was negative. However, when we matched the sample against the outstanding cases, we found that it matched with that of the double rapist. He's not going to come back. People like him go for soft targets. He's not going to risk it again. A rapist? You saw him off, though, didn't you? He won't be back. You weren't going to tell me. I don't believe it. You weren't going to tell me. I mean, what gives you the right? Hang on, what gives you the right? Try and understand, Heather. We didn't want to frighten you unnecessarily. But we do need to ask you a few questions. Clem seemed to think that you'd be up to it. What sort of questions? About the night you went to the club with Melanie. You see, you might have seen or spoken to this man without knowing it. You don't have to if you don't want to. Why don't you take a seat? He was in this room, wasn't he? Look, I'm sorry. I, I can't really remember what happened in the club that night. And It was six weeks ago. I've been a few times since. They all kind of mix into one. Well, what we've got here is a photo fit of the person involved. So if you take a look at that, maybe that'll jog your memory. 
It's all right. It's all right. You recognise him? Yes, I recognise him. Look, um, I'm sorry. Can we do this another time, please? Did you talk to him? Anything you remember could be very useful. No, I'm sorry. You're going to have to do this another time. I'm sorry. Fine. Fine. Well, if you could let us know what you think she's up to him. Um, have you got Melanie's phone number? Well, I've spoken to Claire Thompson. She doesn't seem too interested, but her boyfriend's trying to persuade her. Boyfriend? What's his involvement? Well, unfortunately, he was eavesdropping when I suggested it to her. He wasn't too clever. No, I know. The trouble is, he's the one who's keen on the idea now. He wants to know how much the information would be worth. I told him it depends on the results. But he's insisting I give him a figure. Right, don't involve him. If we're going to develop Claire as an informant, we're looking for a long-term relationship. If the boyfriend's temporary, it could mess things up. Mm. It's burned lovers and all that. Is he temporary? He's a scumbag. Heather would have found out one way or another anyway. Best in the long run to have told us straight. Well, she still might come out. I'll get back to you. Chris! Let me know if Melanie gets here. I've just had Mr Furlong in here doing his war dance. Who's he representing? Colin Price. He reckons Alistair Gregg is harassing his client. Oh, I should have used. He's not going to make an official complaint, but he wants his senior officer to have a word with him. Oh. I'll pass it on anyway. Uh, is the landlord about? Afraid not. It won't be until later. That, uh, that matter we were talking about earlier, I'm interested. Hmm? I know you'll give me what is worth, Sheena. Jeff's right, I could do with the cash. Why the sudden change of heart? Jeff's not around. If he asks, you tell him your governor wouldn't offer any cash. I've told him I'm not interested anyway. This is strictly between you and me. Yeah, well, I was going to suggest the same thing myself. We missed out on the result today, as it happens. Yeah? Colin's been celebrating all afternoon. Colin Price. Yeah. I'll give you a ring at the station. Yeah, within half an hour. Okay. Yeah, would you tell him I dropped by? Oh, lager, Claire. Rapist. He struck twice that we know of. He would have been in the club the night that you and Heather were there. Do you remember him? What was your contact with him? I didn't really say anything. What about Heather? Did she spend any time with him? I don't know. What did she say? I'm asking you, Melanie. What do you remember? It was a while ago. I've been back a few times since then. It's difficult. It's important. Is there anything about this man that you remember? Not really. Ah, oh, Sarge, I was looking for you. I'm going to need a co-handler. Did you wait for it? Yeah, on her own. She's already come up with something. Your recent dealings with Colin Price? What about it? You released him without charge for some burglary? And? Well, it was him, apparently. What, is that what she's saying? He was having a laugh about it with a mate, and he said genetic fingerprinting can't be that hot if he got away with it. I don't, I don't understand. The, the lab said it couldn't have been him. We are talking about the same job, are we? He was interrupted by the occupier? Yeah, that's right. And Colin had a bit of a scuffle with him? Him? Yeah, big bloke, six foot plus. Sorry, I couldn't be more helpful. It's quite all right. Take care now. What do you think? She's hiding something, isn't she? Gov. Alistair. I hear you've been harassing Colin Price. His solicitor says it's an obsession. Yeah, Price was definitely at Heather's flat that night. I'm beginning to believe him. Colin Price broke into Heather Carney's flat, but it was a man he had the scuffle with. Apparently he was sitting at the bar talking quite openly about it. He said they must have come in quietly because he's never normally surprised on the job. And there was a man and a woman? As I understand it, yes. Price had a scuffle with the man and then while he was recovering, Price legged it. What is going on? It, it couldn't just be a coincidence, could it? The burglar and the rapist breaking in at the same time. It's possible. Just. What about Mr Ashcroft, the fiancé? Is there any way it could have been him? Uh, no, his uh, regiment did actually get back to me. They've confirmed he was in Northern Ireland at the time, officially. She couldn't have brought anybody else home that night, could she?
Hi. Can we talk? Yeah. Have there been any um, developments? Whatever you tell us, we'll be in strict confidence. Were you with someone on the night of the burglary? I don't know why I asked him back. We're not going to make any moral judgments. That's not our business. We just want to know what happened. He seemed all right, didn't he? Yeah. You knew about him? I knew Heather was meeting this bloke outside. I knew he was giving her a lift home. He seemed normal. It was quite nice, actually. So he gave you a lift home? It was a cab. And then what happened? We went in the back way. I've got some very nosy neighbours. I didn't want anyone to see us. We were very quiet and then suddenly someone came at us out of the darkness. So who had the scuffle with the intruder? Dan. Is that what he calls himself? It's his real name. And why do you say that? We exchanged phone numbers. I've spoke to him a few times on the phone since. He lives in Liverpool. He comes down here on business sometimes. He seems so normal. You still got the phone number? Yeah, it's at home. So, you had a scuffle, and then what happened? I was shouting and screaming, and then Dan must have been hit because he was on the floor and the burglar was running off. And next thing I know, one of the neighbours is at the door saying she's rung the police. And I, I didn't want her to see that I had someone with me. I can't really found out. So I asked Dan to go out the back way, and he did. And that's when you made up the story about fighting off the intruder on your own? Yeah. Look, Heather, we've got enough evidence to get in for the two rapes. So you need never get involved, and Clem need never know. That's what Melanie said. I can carry on as if nothing ever happened. Well, get him down here. Organise an ID parade. Should be just a formality. Well done, Alistair. And give June a pat on the back as well. Good work. Oh. Alistair. I think I owe you an apology. I was a tad previous in assuming that you had put words into the witness's mouth. You were right. And so were the DNA people down at Lambeth. I should have considered that as a possibility. So old-fashioned instinct isn't quite redundant yet? No. Give it a couple of years. Chris, it's just a thought, but um, this rapist... Do you think he might be prepared to identify the burglar he had a scrap with? I mean, if he's going down anyway. It was dark, Alistair. Well, he might have seen enough. You're obsessed. I'd just like to see the look on Colin Price's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could almost feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs>